Hi guys, so um, this is me trying the chapter one read aloud of the book Fossils again. Um, in this book Fossils, you're going to notice it's a very like shiny book, so it's going to be hard to see sometimes, so I'm going to do my best. But we're noticing that it's non-fiction. When a book is non-fiction, that means that it is true. It is filled with real facts and information. So what I want us to think about is while we open this book Fossils, we are going to notice some text features that help us understand the book a little bit more. So this is Fossils by Anno Squire. Do you recognize this page? What do you think this text feature is? Hmm. And I'm thinking because I'm noticing this right here, contents, contents. Hmm. What is this text feature? Hmm. I'm thinking it's the table of contents. And I'm thinking about how this table of contents helps me as the reader. For example, I'm noticing there's all these chapters. I see five chapters. I also see that over here we have some more resources in the back of the book. As a reader, I know that there will be five chapters. We are going to be listening to chapter one, clues from the past, and we're going to be thinking about the main question, what are fossils? Now I can find chapter one on page seven. Because I have this table of contents, I know all the different um, things I'm going to be learning about in this book. And I know that in chapter one, I'm thinking about that question, what are fossils? And that starts on page seven. So let's look down at our pages. I'm noticing I'm not on page seven. Ah, here we are. So here is our first chapter, clues from the past. Now let's listen in. Did you ever wonder how scientists have learned so much about Earth's history? How do we know what the dinosaurs looked like, what they ate, or where they lived? How do we know that fish existed before mammals? How have we learned about our human ancestors? The answer to these questions is through the study of fossils. Fossils are the remains or traces of animals and plants that have been preserved in the Earth's rocky crust. Now we're noticing here that this is a fossil and this kind of looks like what Mary Anning discovered. It looks like that winged creature and I can tell just from the shape of the bones here. This is the mm, Archaeopteryx and it's considered the earliest bird. And like I said, look at those wings. I can see that and I notice that it is a winged bird. I'm also noticing that when this bird died, it looks like it got crushed. Look at the way it's its neck is right now. That's a little uncomfortable. So we're going to be thinking about how these fossils give us clues to finding out about what life was like millions of years ago before humans. Remember, it said, how have we learned about our human ancestors? Which means humans were not always on planet Earth. Let's keep going. Digging up fossils. Most fossils are buried beneath the Earth. Paleontologists excavate or dig and remove them from the surrounding rock. Fossils are delicate, so scientists must work carefully. Hmm, that makes me think about some of the tools paleontologists use. I know that they're not always using a pickaxe or a shovel, and now we know that fossils are delicate. No wonder why they use brushes all the time. Excavators may mist water on the rock to soften it. So that means that they're using one of those spray bottles to mist the water onto the fossil to soften it or the rock to soften it so they can chip away at it. Then they use tools such as dental picks to chip the rock away, just like I just said. Large bones are usually encased in plaster of Paris to protect them for transport. They are shipped to laboratories for further study. So that plaster of Paris is that white stuff we see sometimes around the bone to protect it. We watched it in one of those videos. In this photograph, let's read the caption. Paleontologists carefully excavate a 10 million year old rhinoceros skeleton in Nebraska. Wow, that looks like there's more than one. Look, I'm noticing ribs here. I'm noticing ribs over here. I'm noticing he's working on something over here. Wow. 
bones, and more. When you think of a fossil, you probably picture a dinosaur bone or even a complete skeleton. But fossils can be more than just bones. Teeth, shells, and other hard parts of plants and animals can also become fossils. Sometimes, an animal leaves behind traces such as footprints, tooth marks, or even impressions of its skin. Clear fossil impressions of dinosaur skin give us a good idea of what these ancient animals looked like. So I'm noticing that this doesn't look like bones. Can you guys see that? That doesn't look like bones. Well, no wonder. Let me read the caption and find out what it is. This fossil shows the scaly skin of a hadrosaurus. So that's not bones, guys. That's skin. That's so strange. That looks like an impression of skin. It doesn't look like the actual skin. And this, the hydrosaurus lived in what is now New Jersey. That's a state in the United States. Hmm. Yeah, I'm noticing that photograph. Those look strange. Let's read the caption. Ancient worms created these tracks in the earth, which later fossilized. Oh, wow. So those are worm marks. That's so, that's so interesting. Another thing that animals leave behind is their droppings. Fossilized droppings are called coprolites. They can tell us a lot about an animal's size and what the animal ate. Worms and other soft animals cannot become fossils, but the burrows they dig can become fossilized, which is why we see those worm tracks. But lo by looking at the space in which an animal lived, we can learn a lot about its shape and size. Its size and shape. Hmm. Yeah, so we know worms cannot become fossils because they're too squishy, right? But we can see all of their tracks they make. Fossils, young and old. Life has existed on Earth for billions of years. So a 10,000-year-old fossil is actually very young. Animals preserved during Earth's last ice age are among the youngest fossils ever found. Scientists in Australia recently discovered fossils that may be the world's oldest. These fossilized single-celled organisms are 3.4 billion years old. This is such a strange looking fossil. It's purple and pink. Can you guys see that? It's a little bit shiny. Special lighting and powerful microscopes help paleontologists look at fossilized single-celled organisms such as algae. Algae is basically invisible, so this is being um, held under a microscope. And we talked about microscopes earlier in the year. Those are special tools scientists use to help see things that are too small to see with your human eye. Earth was formed 4.6 billion years ago. At first, conditions were harsh and very hot. Reminds me of the desert. The air had no oxygen. Oh, so everybody take a breath in. Take a breath out. You're breathing oxygen in. Without oxygen, we cannot live. So if the earth had no oxygen, that means there was nothing on earth. Around 540 million years ago, animals that we might recognize began to develop. This was the beginning of the Paleozoic era. Sponges, worms, and snails were among the first animals. Fish developed around 400 million years ago, followed by insects and amphibians. In the middle of the Paleozoic era, 310 million years ago, reptiles developed. So what came first? Let's find it. Let's look in the reading. What came first? Around 540 million years ago, animals that we might recognize began to develop. It says it was the beginning of the Paleozoic era. So what was first? Sponges, worms, and snails. Those were the first animals on Earth. Then what came next? Fish, insects, and amphibians. So no humans. Not hearing any humans. Let's look at this. This is not an actual picture. I don't know if you can see that, but this is um, like a digital image. So an artist created this digitally to show us what it might have looked like on the ocean floor because they don't exist anymore. They're extinct. The first trilobites lived on Earth about 542 million years ago. So we did not have cameras 542 million years ago, and humans were not around. So we are pretending an artist made this with a digital drawing. Wow. 
So again, this is a digital drawing. We're noticing that these are not real photographs. These are digital drawings. Scientists argue that Brachiosaurus lived in groups. So these dinosaurs, um, we don't know if they lived in groups, but we're, the scientists think or they argue that they definitely did. Probably because, hmm, I wonder why scientists argue that Brachiosaurus lived in groups. I wonder if they're finding lots of Brachiosaurus skeletons together. That might make them think that they lived in groups. Ruling reptiles. The Mesozoic era came next, lasting from 250 million to 65 million years ago. Reptiles dominated the land, overshadowing all other animals. If reptiles were dominating, what does that mean? If they're dominating the land, it means they, they rule the land. They're the, the most on earth. In fact, this era is often called the age of reptiles. Dinosaurs such as Tyrannosaurus rex, Stegosaurus, and Triceratops roamed the earth at various times during this period. Yet, the age of reptiles did not last forever. By the end of the Mesozoic era, all the dinosaurs had become extinct. And I'm noticing this word is big and bold. So maybe I should read it different. Let me try that again. By the end of the Mesozoic era, all the dinosaurs had become extinct. I also know that because this is bold, it'll be in the glossary, which is in the back of the book, in my important words. And I'm seeing extinct. No longer found alive. Wow. So all the dinosaurs were no longer found alive. Again, this is a digital drawing. This is not a real photograph. Giant mammoths and dire wolves lived about 150,000 years ago. Hmm. So this reminds me of, this is a mammoth. This is that character from Ice Age. That would be the, the mammoth character. The Age of Mammals. After the dinosaurs became extinct, mammals developed rapidly, replacing the ruling reptiles on land. This age of mammals from 65 million years ago until the present is known as the Cenozoic Era. Giant mastodons and saber-toothed cats were some of the animals that lived during this time. The first modern humans developed very recently, only about 200,000 years ago. So we know these are those um, giant mammoths. Sorry if there's a weird, uh, sorry if there's like a weird pause in the video there I'm at. <laughs> I'm somewhere else and I needed to stop the video. But after reading this page, we are noticing that humans developed very recently, only about 200,000 years ago. So humans are very, very new to Earth. So it's very important for humans to think about this big question. What are fossils and how can they help us? Fossils are... We find them. They're clues to help us discover what really happened back before humans were alive. We don't know. We didn't have any photographs. We didn't have any video cameras. There was definitely, definitely no iPhones. So we need to use these clues that we have, these fossils, to help us put together what really happened because we really will never actually know. Now, this last page here asks the question, what are fossil fuels? Fossils actually provide much of the energy we use today. Coal, oil, and natural gas are called fossil fuels. Again, there's that bolded word. We know that it's going to be in our important words at the end. Fossil fuels are coal, oil, or natural gas formed from the remains of prehistoric plants and animals. Hundreds of millions of years ago, wet tropical areas filled with plants and animals covered much of the earth. When organisms died, they sank to the bottom of the swamps, oceans, and bogs. They were buried under layers of sand and clay. Over millions of years, heat and pressure in the Earth's crust transformed the matter into coal, oil, and natural gas. And this is a drilling rig, and they pump oil from deep within the Earth. So we actually get the, the energy we use to turn on our lights, to charge our phones, to charge our computers. Um, we get that from fossil fuels. So now I want you to just think about that question. Clues from the past. What are fossils? And that was after finishing chapter one.